Well, as uh, matric exams get into full swing, education authorities in Gauteng are happy with how it is going so far. And while in general attendance has been good, there was a concerning rate of absenteeism among part-time candidates from all districts. So let's quickly get a status update for you and check in with Gauteng Education MEC Matume Chilwane. Good evening, um, MEC, and welcome to you. What can you report to parents and families tonight on the overall sitting? Uh, good evening to you, good evening to your viewers. Thank you again once more. Um, uh, firstly, let me just quickly address the the, 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 the the gentleman who just spoke now. He spoke about very concerning figures. I really think that it's always advisable to get your facts right when you speak. Uh, to say 400,000 odd uh, learners or young people are lost in the system in a period of 12 years is highly incorrect. There are multiple factors that could have led to those learners not reaching grade 12. Uh, and there is those include failure, that includes migration, that includes those who go to TV colleges. So it's a lot. So to come and assume that they're all gone doom and gloom is not correct and it's far from the truth. And it's important for a person to get their facts right from. from well, MEC, let's time. quickly stay on that one. So uh, for parents then, or for people who are watching the space and researchers, where is the resource that they can go to, to look at the attrition rates and where people were lost to, as you say, between TVET colleges, leaving the province, relocating to other schools. Um, I'm presuming that that data is, is well articulated. Yes, that data should be available uh, at the DBE as well. Uh, because some learners go to uh, prefer TV colleges, uh, they go to to them post uh, grade nine. So we do have quite a number of them, and we do have those that actually do fail, uh, and 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 they do come back and register. But so it's it's multiple of factors. So if you want detail, we can provide it. Uh, it's there, the DB. Uh, but to have an assumption that all of them. Uh, they're gone somewhere, they're, in, they're lost, uh, they're facing a, a life of poverty is not true. Uh, it's not true. Uh, uh, you, you know it between myself and yourself, and, and I know that majority of them who, might, who are in FET colleges or relocated out of the country, there's the migration. So it's quite a number of factors. It's a big number that those who came in through in migration and have gone back to their countries is there. It's it's a it's a, the, it's multiple of factors that could have led to All right. that uh, number. Yes. Oh, okay, MEC. All right. Well, I don't. You know, I mean, I can't concur or, or, or disagree because I don't have the number in front of me. But I take the point that you're making, and certainly we'll circle back to this one. Let's quickly then go to the state of play now with matrix because we're almost out of time. So you're fairly happy overall that it's going smoothly. Just then, let's just talk about the absenteeism rates uh, from part-time students. What's fueling that? Uh, and, and what are the risks here? Yeah, we we, we are aging them. Uh, the, the number of absenteeism from part time is quite it was high, um, uh, about four four five thousand of them. So it's a it's a lot, it's a big number. So uh, the, there's a number of reasons. Uh, I might not know some. Maybe maybe they are not prepared because part time learners are those who are employed or their employers or uh, so there's a number of factors that. I would not know to the top of my mind, but we we are urging them that please, please, you know, this is the last step uh, to conclude their, their their preparation for the year. They have registered, they've gone through all the process throughout the year to prepare them for this particular period. And we need to urge them to write. Uh, but we also, also noted a few absenteeism from the full-time candidates and we ensure that those learners that they, they had not written we, we do follow up so through our districts to check within our schools what happened to those learners who didn't write. Uh, so we are following up on our full time candidates predominantly, but we are urging our part times to please uh, uh, continue to write. They've prepared this far. All right. Uh, any word on, uh, I was actually, you know, I was coming to the building for my shift today and I, one of the parents of a matric student came out saying, hey, can you, if you're speaking to anyone in authority, ask them why they're not keeping the lights on. The kids are writing. They need, you know, light to study and for their well-being as well. Uh, any word on that? Any talks you're having, uh, you know, with, with, with between yourselves and, and, and uh, you know, people like ESCOM and City Power and so on to make sure that we can have longer hours where the lights stay on so that matrix can write and prepare for their exams fairly smoothly? Is that conversation happening at all? Um, not currently. The conversation is uh, we want to urge our learners to prepare 
uh, with different uh, strategies because we don't want to confirm the the ESCOM the load shading. But I, I've seen that the load shading the stages have, have dropped down a bit, and which is encouragement that meaning that the lights are on for much longer periods of time. Uh, so we are urging them that at least in between this, the, the the periods of when they are writing exams. Uh, let the lights be on and i've seen that during the day the stages are a bit low so meaning that uh, during those time frames where uh, learners are actually writing we do have lights so but in terms of conversation those conversations should be at the level of the minister but on our side where we've prepared our learners to prepare for different strategies of learning periods okay uh, as still is with us mec thanks for your time tonight we appreciate it gauteng education mec matume chilwane